They came here. They were killed here. They came here for their future and for the future of their grandchildren. Tamara Schwetz and her husband participated in Euromaidan from the start of the revolution. But in the evening of February 18th, he had gone alone. He came to dinner. I told him, Vitya, people were killed there. We stayed home. He silently dressed and gathered his things. I asked him where he was going. He answered that he was going to Maidan, but that we should stay home. From Maidan, Tamara's husband called her one last time that evening. And on the morning of February 19th, at 4 a.m., she got a different call informing her of his death. Afterward, in photos she found on the internet, she recognized her husband among the wounded, being taken on a stretcher. Later, the examiner determined that he had been killed by a bullet from a hunting rifle. Ihor and his father were together at Maidan that day. He remembers that evening. They were surrounded by government forces on all sides. Armored vehicles pulled up. The attack on them began. I saw them going toward the European square. They were throwing grenades, storming our barricades, but not yet shooting at us with guns. A unit descended the stairs from the October Palace and roughly pushed against our barricades toward the House of Unions. They were throwing grenades twice as often. The tents were on fire. There was nowhere to hide. Ihor remembers people moved to the trade union's building. For a moment, he lost sight of his father. And when he caught sight of his father, he saw that he had been killed. The one who did it, obviously, shot to kill. It wasn't meant to wound. It was a clear hit from 15 to 20 meters. My father was wearing a helmet. He didn't have a shield. We were on our feet all day, exhausted. Despite the darkness, it was impossible not to see that it was a man about 50 years old. They saw him and they shot to kill. That night, 15 people were killed, two of them burned alive in the House of Trade Unions. The attack was a well-planned operation. In the security service of Ukraine, there were also documents about the attack. Later, they were destroyed. The former head of the Kiev security service, Alexander Shagoliev, is in custody. The prosecutor's office believed that he was in charge of the so-called anti-terrorist operation and ordered the units to assault the activists at Maidan. It's been established that 11,500 security service agents participated in the special operation. Shagoliev is being held in a Kiev pretrial detention center. According to the forecasts of the General Prosecutor's Office, hearings can last for years. Objectively, matters of such complexity cannot be considered in a month or two. Time is needed to interview the victims. There are 136. Even if we hold weekly sessions and exclude any disruptions, it could take years. Relatives of the victims are still looking for witnesses to establish the identity of the gunmen and to prove that their relatives were unarmed. Lawyers try to say that it was not a peaceful protest. And every time I stand in court and emphasize that it was a peaceful protest action, my husband didn't have a weapon, like the other 38 people who were killed in Institutska Street. There aren't many videos of the burning house of trade unions on the 18th and 19th of February. Daria, the daughter-in-law of the deceased Volodymyr Kolchitsky, spent days searching for video from there. She helps families who lost their relatives to reconstruct the events. On February 18th, in the evening, there was chaos. Everything was burning. The city center was burning. It was very difficult to understand anything. What was filmed on the phone wasn't clear because of darkness. You can only make things out on video recorded by professional cameras. We didn't manage to collect video of someone falling from being shot. There were a few times where people were being carried, but they were wounded. We really don't have enough video and enough witnesses. I hope that in 2018 we will have some developments regarding the investigation of the events that transpired on the 18th of February. I hope that by next year, on the 5th anniversary, the investigation will be completed and the guilty will be punished. I hope.